Hey, what's going on? It's your old buddy Fletch, and this is Farming with Fletch. And today, I am setting another beehive. This beehive over here, we've had such great success with it that we've decided to copy it right here at this location. This is where we have our raised beds with our strawberries in it. I have built a little platform down here. I have mounted these brackets to the back. See these brackets right here? Then they're actually going to attach the raised beds to keep them in place. That's what we did over there. And we've had really good success with it. So we're just going to copy the same thing over here on this hive, which used to be out back. Um, if you look back at some of the older videos, you'll see it. It was clear back in the back. It had the privacy fence around it. Uh, we moved it up here. We are getting so many bees in this hive that we're scared that they're going to swarm. So we're just going to put this hive here and see if they swarm over to this hive and uh, go from there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So here the base is mounted down. I've, I've bolted or screwed down the back. I actually cut my little cage and folded it up there. Uh, we don't even have a cage behind that. It's over there because nothing gets inside of that. Put these cages on here a little while back to keep the deer from eating all the strawberry plants. Uh, and it's and it's worked but i had to lift up this back section back here a little bit because right here y'all see that there's a screen right here and then if i move this you can actually pull out this tray down here and clean all that stuff off or you can put the tray over and give them a little more air but uh i just put it like that for now because Right now we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to catch another trap or not. On the front here we got a little, like a drawbridge door. Put that down and it uh, lets them not have as much of a space and they don't have to defend as much of a space. You give them a little more, more and it gives them a little more air, a little more room. I painted this one like a uh, pink color because that one over there is blue. And I was watching somebody's tutorial on YouTube and they were saying different colors. That way the bees don't get confused which hive they go to. Uh, these, this one used to be white. And it was weird because the last time when we bought that hive, the guy did have different colors painted on the front of the hive boxes. So he must have learned that as well. So that's the base. It's screwed down, mounted. I got it up on a platform so it's up off the ground so it don't rot. Uh, and so, you know ants and stuff hopefully won't get into it but uh what goes on next is a a hive box i got deep hive boxes over there but like i said uh we're gonna put on these we're gonna put on these these are called supers right here and they just sit on there and then the deep the bees will actually use their wax to glue them onto there and make it to where it doesn't come off there so i put that in there like that and i'm gonna stack another one on top okay there's the other super on top um, i left a gap in here just because i didn't have any more super frames uh, to put in there these are what they build their combs on and, and store all their honey in but uh if you're not gonna if you have a big gap you want it in the middle you don't want it on the outside so because this is where they'll build a big, huge comb right in here, and they'll all start to live in there. What had happened with this base and the big, deep uh, hive that we had on here is a couple years ago, it didn't survive winter. So we just kind of just left it alone. We had this one over here that was going good, and we weren't really worried about it, so we just left it alone. Well, what had happened is hive moss had moved in there and just filled the whole hive with moss. So Danielle took and cleaned all that out and got it all clean. And now she has all of our frames that were infested with hive moss. She has them all in the freezer and she's letting them freeze until it kills everything off. And then we'll switch these out for some, for some regular uh, boxes. Hopefully they don't all move in here before that. But this is just in case they decide to swarm and they have somewhere to go. Now, for those of you who want to see how we catch the swarms, whenever we put a trap out, we always use lemongrass essential oil. You can buy this anywhere where they sell essential oil. See, it's just, it's just lemongrass essential oil. It smells really good. 
and the lid's cracked on it, so they can probably already smell it. I'm surprised they ain't coming over here and attacking me. So what I do is I take a Q-tip and I put some on there and then I rub it inside the hive box and I rub it on the entrance and right there. And that'll attract them to it and they'll come in there and they'll check it out and they'll be like, hey, there's a lot of room over here. Let's start a new colony over here. And uh, then they'll start setting up over here. Oh look, there's, there's one coming over here to check it out. So, yeah, he's checking me out. Anyway, let me go ahead and hurry up and get this done before they start attacking me. So what I did is I took the Q-tip and I rubbed it in the entrance there and then I rubbed it down on the front of this. And then I took and rubbed it right there. I don't know if you can see that wet spot or not. And rubbed it right there. And then I just set the Q-tip up here on the top edge of this box. So all that scent is still in there. See the little bit of pink on the end of there where you can tell where I rubbed it on there. But just leave that up in there and they will come up there and they will find that sweet smell they got. Now, the top of the hive gets this right here setting on it. That is the cover. And you can have it where they go in or out up here, but we don't we don't usually use that. And then it's got this piece here that goes on top here. And you can actually screw on a sugar water. This is a mason jar lid with holes punched in it. You can actually screw on a mason jar with sugar water in it and feed your bees during the winter time. A lot of people do that. We prefer to not have our bees uh, be dependent on us. So we don't do that. We just uh, let them live off the honey they've collected. So uh, that piece goes on there. And then the final piece is just that uh, roof sitting on top of there. It has little vents on either side of it um, to where it gets a little airflow in there. And uh, yeah, that is our hives. That is what our hives look like. And people make hives different ways, but this is the uh, hives that we've gotten. And I plan on getting some other hives in the future. I'm allergic to bees. Danielle usually takes care of all the bees and stuff. But uh, I'm really wanting to get into this more, so I'm going to try to get me a bee suit and do some of this on my own, even though I'm allergic. I want to uh, keep bees going. Look, they're very active over there right now. They're just going in and out of that like crazy. So as the day gets hotter, the queen will actually move outside and they'll all swarm around her and protect her. She'll just hang out out, out in the front. It's, it's weird. But uh, we've been noticing that. That's why we wanted to put these over here. Oh, I got some more. I got some bees on me right now. They're landing on me. I think they got that lemon seed oil on me. So anyway, I'm going to get off here. Until the next time I make one of these videos, you all stay awesome.